secret friends unite! Welcome to the Secret Friends Unite podcast, episode 443. This is your guide to the geek side, and I am one of your hosts, Todd Oxer, living in beautiful Savage, Minnesota, and now I have a clean garage. It makes me so happy, so usable. Cannot think about that's going to be my new secret lair. I'm going to oh. have all of my secret devices, the Todd Copter, the Todd Mobile. <laughs> the Todd <copter>. <laughs> the t- like, the the fan, like the Thanos take. Copter and the Superman. What was it? The super, Didn't Superman have a plane? But it was it, that was from the old superpowers line. It was it Correct. was like a flying thing fists. but it had punching fists because yes. well, first of all it's like why does why does superman need something that flies he can fly in space right but then uh, what if he's are, around a if he's around a uh red sun charlie you remember like supergirl so uh, she needed he a would, plane so did that did that apply when he's on another planet so would he have to like take it with would he have to carry it so that he can then drive it it's just it's kind of uh yes he'd have to either tow it or ride it halfway it's, oh my it's god we are we are absolutely off the rails but we have a great new guest we are, we're breaking in somebody new and uh this is a gent uh who mm-hmm. technically works for me because he's an sfi guy this is aaron hemager everybody he is uh, the uh captain of a shakedown chapter of starfleet international in southwest michigan called the uss rhapsody he is running that chapter with his lovely wife jesse aaron welcome to our program well thank don't you so much worry, aaron don't worry, Aaron. This is a harassment-free zone. I watch Charlie. I will hold him accountable. Bad boss. Good boss, Charlie. Be a good boss. Oh, oh, oh. Star, Starfleet bad bosses. There's plenty. But yeah, Aaron, yeah. we we met uh, just about three or four months ago. And mm-hmm. uh, you're, you, you'll tell us in a moment about your geek origin. But uh, you had met other members of SFI at Motor City Comic Con in the Detroit yep. area. And you sought mm-hmm. out SFI. And through that, you kind of ended up on my radar because you were on my, my not assigned to a chapter list. And when I, I reached out, as I often do, you reached out back, and then you, April, and Jesse, and I had a call, and then boom, you got a chapter. Yeah, you got a chapter. I, I'm, I'm the I'm the Oprah of SFI. <laughs> you got a chapter. You got a chapter. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, give us give us your the Reader's Digest version. How did you find yourself as a part of this life? Okay, well, it started very early on as a kid. Um, you know, I have an, I had an older brother, but he wasn't around very often, so I kind of grew up kind of alone, and I kind of fell into uh, reading comic books and stuff um, as, as kind of my my only social interaction very early on. Uh, you know, I remember uh, finding an old Batman comic. Uh, I can't remember the issue, but it was like Batman versus the FBI. And it was oh just boy. after, yeah, <laughs> it was, <laughs> yeah, that was a really good comic. I read that and I was like kind of hooked on Batman from then on and started He's watching the old, man. yeah, yeah, it was <laughs> awesome. I uh, started re- watching like the old 66 reruns and my love <laughs> of, of sci-fi and comics kind of grew from there. Um, you know, when he got older and I started getting into high school and college, uh, well, when I was in high school, I joined, uh, uh, I was telling Charlie about this a while back, uh, the Maquis Forces of Buchanan. Awesome. Um, which is a, <laughs> yeah, that was my first. You're on my the first FBI watch list. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Oh God. That's, yeah. It's the Star Trek Michigan militia of Southwest Michigan. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, but that was my first experience with a fan group, and from there, you know, I met my wife, and we started doing cosplay and doing different events. Like we were, um, they used to call us like the Justice League of Chicago, where we would dress up as uh, we'd had the whole Justice League team, and we would go to Wizard World every year. And then I, I met uh, my friends uh, John, John, and uh, Ryan, who were the founders of Michigan Ghostbusters. And uh, we started doing that as a fan group. We were on an episode of uh, Shipping Wars uh, for some of our entrepreneurial work with that group. Oh, cool. Um, yep. That was a lot of fun. And then I, they ended up uh, going their separate ways, and I kind of took over the franchise for a while. And uh, now I'm getting to the point where uh, I'm kind of letting the newer people kind of take over GBMI, and I'm moving on to uh, – another passion of mine star trek uh and the uss rhapsody so that's kind oh, of my yeah. new endeavor right now although i should mention this halloween gbmi we just had a reunion and we are having a halloween special coming out on our youtube channel uh Ooh. you all might want to check out plug 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 you'll get plenty of chance to plug at the end as oh, well so very that's cool good stuff yeah yeah when you when you first mentioned about when you're talking about getting your habit i thought oh god we're going to drugs aren't we nope. oh, no 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 comics <laughs> comics yeah, it comes, it comes right back to right back to yeah. talking about breaking bad <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. My oh, parents, yeah, yeah. My, oh, my, good to hear. 
my parents would probably well, argue about which of those was the, was the probably the less cost effective approach. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, what's the only thing? You know, introduce your kids to action figures. They won't have money for drugs. Hey, you know, there you go. I don't know. Yep. Hopefully, hopefully it won't be. But <laughs> well, anyway, it's so awesome to have you. We're gonna. We're now. I, I feel like this is an episode of SNL. We've got a great show for you tonight. Mm-hmm. Aaron is our musical guest, and uh, no, but uh, yeah, boom, boom. Um, but yeah, we are. You know, as always, um, we're we're giving some love and respect uh, to the WGA. SAG after a strike we're in one day 147 mm-hmm. of that writer strike and day 77 of that actor strike further grinding down the wheels of the entertainment industry it's going to be a very quiet 2024 just get ready for it um but you know these people as we've been saying week after week are in a fight for their livelihood we're in complete support uh, of what they're doing uh, we here at SFU uh, we're very fortunate that we were able to uh, to donate some funds to the entertainment community fund Dot, or entertainmentcommunity.org, the Entertainment Community Fund. Uh, please go if you can donate to help these people out. Uh, that would be awesome as they continue um, to find uh, their direction in in being able to, you know, support themselves. So we're definitely in, in big, big support of that. Um, yeah, and- uh, I don't know, Sar- Charlie, if you heard about this. Uh, Disney, um, their special effects artists have voted to unionize. So that's awesome. Another Good. Another group that's going to unionize. I hear about the video game voice actors are looking to unionize as well and obviously if you're in michigan or plants uh, states that have auto workers they are on strike now and right exactly crazy world you yeah. know what yeah everybody's mm-hmm. fighting for their rights so that's um i mean it's frankly it's what america's all about um and that uh, that that works for me um even if you know i'm not i'm not buying a a car. I, I just bought a car this summer, so I'm all set there. But I, you know, I care about all the people, especially here in Michigan, who are affected by that. So, yeah, do whatever you can to support those nice folks, without a doubt. Okay, mm-hmm. moving right along, uh, we always do want to pay love and homage to the wonderful folks that support us through our Patreon and give us the ability to create some killer content. Aaron, you mentioned Batman 1966. Uh, mm-hmm. Just last a uh, couple of weeks ago, uh, published part one of a three part series about the first season of Batman 66. Which with my partner Jonathan Snedeker. Second segment is coming out this Friday. Um, and and you can, Aaron, visit patreon.com slash secret friends unite, get a free seven day trial and sample all of our wares. I've got a couple shows that I do. I do a show with my wife, April. Todd does mm-hmm. a couple of programs. Todd and I do a program together. Um, but yeah, jump on in there. And at any level, uh, you can listen to our program. But in the Absolutely. meantime, We'd like to pay homage uh, to the folks who are our top supporters, including Jamie Prinky on the Best Buds level and on the BFF level, Sean, Stella, and Henry Nias, the Nias family, my dear friend, Missy Merchant, and Andy Milliken. Uh, please do a visit, uh, once again, patreon.com slash Secret Friends Unite. Check us out. If you like uh, what you hear, consider sticking around because we love uh, producing that content for you. So, Todd, you picked a cover Yes. synonymous with my birth this oh, almost uh, i was born at the end of february of 1976 this is from march of 1976 i love it if you can see let me see if i can you can kind of catch upper right hand corner i've got the, both of those characters are right there look drax and big old captain Mar- no actually no captain marvel's over there sorry but big Weird sized Drax is over there. Uh, anyway, we have the Captain Marvel title uh, from that month. This is uh, issue 43 with a uh, that costs you a whole dollar or 25 cents, two bits to get your hands on this. The most cosmic superhero of all uh, with a big old thought bubble that says the destroyer has returned. And this time even I can't stop him. You see big old purple and green Drax the destroyer, not looking like Dave Batista, cho- you know, choking the crap out of the guy who does not look like uh, Annette Benning, uh, who's Marvel. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, Drax says, "You destroyed my only reason reason for living, Marvel." Uh, apparently, he liked you know W. Oh, he's putting a wrestler move on him, like kind of a WWE thing. Now I'm going to destroy you. Well, you saw that company, and they're wrestling in space. And apparently, you can talk in space even when there's no air. So. Suspend your disbelief. Uh, Mm -hmm. Cover art done by Todd's number one favorite artist of all time, Al Milgram. Yes. Yes. Uh, So this comic is fairly interesting because um, anybody who's heard of Drax the Destroyer probably only thinks of the MCU version or the late 
uh, I guess it was mid 2000s run of Guardians of the Galaxy because Drax Destroyer did not look like he does now in the MCU back in the day. He right. was part of the cosmic the universe and he, yeah. his origin was still tied mm-hmm. to Thanos. He was mm-hmm. mad apparently because he missed out on a chance to uh, kill Thanos or he thought he could and, and mm-hmm. uh, Captain Marvel stopped him. So that's kind of the premise of this book. Um, and Man. it is interesting because, um, you know, Captain uh, Captain Marvel or Marvel really doesn't exist in the MCU. Yeah, he's he was, ca- like, he was he's, a, yeah, gone all together now, isn't he? Yeah, classic mm-hmm. character. One of the classic iconic deaths that's never been revisited in Marvel is when he died of cancer, had that one famous graphic novel, The Death of Captain Marvel. Yeah, so yeah. it's that's kind of a, a, a rough spot for me in, in the MCU, the fact that they took something so iconic and they said... Eh, doesn't matter, which is kind of like, okay, sometimes you got to at least do a better job than saying, oh, it's Annette Benning, and it just happens to be a normal person that nobody yeah, really remembers. Exactly. I, yeah, exactly. I almost forgot Marvel was actually in that movie, Charlie. So right. Well, it, well yeah, was. Wendy Wendy Lawson or Marvel, it was just kind of like, oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. You took one of the most iconic characters from the 1970s in Marvel that really ruled, yeah. uh, you know, for, and again, I wasn't reading in the 70s, but certainly I caught up, uh, you know, into the 80s with that um, because mm-hmm. I think the death of Captain Marvel was published in 81 82 so that was even before i was reading uh on a monthly basis but yeah that's a real ripoff i'm kind of bummed mm-hmm. out by so, that so so aaron question to you you look at this cover who do you think mm-hmm. won oh it had to be marvell oh well, it's yeah. his it's his I mean, book even though he's mean, <laughs> even though he's not as beefy i mean yeah i mean drax was awesome and everything but you got to remember also you know uh like you mentioned he's a lot different than he is in the mcu i mean this is the drax that was originally a real estate agent from la you know that was his uh origin that's I, uh, right and i saw it here it says his name is art douglas i'm well, like what he wasn't an alien i didn't know yeah. this yeah I, no, he, he don't you know what because oh I'm trying to remember because those he played the saxophone, Charlie. Those characters mm-hmm. all died, and they came back in the actual Infinity Gauntlet. Were not they reincarnated? Mm-hmm. Is that is that what that from? Or well, this, is before, this is before uh, that. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Oh man, oh, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. I, I think I'm going to have to pull out my uh, official guide to the Marvel Universe because yeah. I'm uh, I, I'm not hip to that. So well. well Crazy man. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, somebody who probably knew that answer because they were reading the book at the time would be our senior news correspondent. I'm talking about Madam Webb at 123 years young. She's down, as always, at the corner of Hollywood and Vine with all of the latest scoops. Let's check it out. Now it's time for Madam Webb's rumors and news. Take it away, boys. Thank you, Madam Webb. Madam Webb, uh, you know, we've had a few guests who are a part of Ghostbuster groups, and I know you are very fearful of them because anytime you're walking across the street, <laughs> they are assuming you are a poltergeist. Maybe the the, the famous poltergeist from the library in Ghostbusters. That's one, what I was going to say. Run away and scream. So, it's the same uh, lady. Yeah. So, you Aaron, know, just, where are you it, from? Just make sure originally. You, you, you check before yeah. you, you, you yeah. shoot your prototype. Well, I definitely love to get a PKA reading on her just to find out for sure how <laughs> yeah. how ghostly we're talking here. <laughs> she's, she's almost translucent to be that by means that she needs more vitamins mm-hmm. in her system. My- my uncle sure, thought sure. he was Saint Jerome. Anyway, okay, <laughs> so uh, we are we are trailers ahoy. Bam, bam. This week we got three in a row. So uh, kicking it off, I love this. And Todd, I don't know where you're at with Harley Quinn. I'm have not watched the current season, um, and I didn't really watch. I think the first two seasons while they were on, but I was like, oh, I finally discovered this and just blast because it's 22 minutes and you you can watch 10 of them in a weekend or whatever. Uh, but I'm not caught up on this, but one of the characters in that super satirical show is Kite Man, who's uh, you know one of the very long lines of just like ridiculous DC villains. But this show, Harley, and then obviously with this character as well, just leans, leans into it so hard they practically do a backflip. It's just, it's crazy. <laughs> This is a minute long trailer, and I watched with April, and she was like, "What the hell is this?" <laughs> Who should have his own show, Kite Man? I uh, guess. Charlie, by the way, I'm on season two. So, oh, Aaron, okay, gotcha. Are you watching yeah. Harley Quinn, the animated series? I, yeah, I haven't watched the new season. I'm I'm up to date through season three. Oh, there you go. I'm the man gotcha. that's behind. So yeah, gotcha. I mean, well, good. Uh, wait, I I think I've seen one, two, three, but this is mm-hmm. this. It's in four right now. Is it? Mm-hmm. Season four. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, this is was fun. Special, yeah, there was the Harley Quinn Valentine. Was, special, a val- was yeah. the yeah. last thing that launched. Oh, yeah, gotcha. Show. Okay, so anyway, yeah. this looks like fun, and he's voiced by I could I could put my finger on it. Who's doing the voice the voice acting? 
for Kite Man? Um, good question. I didn't recognize because this voice. it almost sounded like Patton, but it, you know, Patton Oswald is Aaron is my he's my spirit animal of comedians. I love him, but <laughs> I, I don't think it's him. Though I know he's had a role in this. I'm sure of it. But oh, but anyway, his, his uh, name is uh, James. No, oh, let's see. Uh, okay, uh, James Abdomian. No, oh, I guess I don't know that name. Yeah. But anyway, oh, no, that's, uh, that's Bane. Yeah, that's Bane. Sorry. And, okay. and the, the cast of characters in this is going to be uh, Bane, uh, Malice, Queen of the Fables, we've seen before. Mean, yeah. Uh, Dark Side with Keith David doing the voice. Very cool. Oh, uh, I love Keith David. Yes. Joe Mo Dubles uh, by Michael Imperioli. Uh, oh, Gus the Goon. Uh, Lance Reddick is Lex Luthor, which is, you know, he passed away. Oh, uh, gotcha. <laughs> Judith Light is Helen Villigan. What? Yo, oh, my yeah. Angela. Yo, Angela! <laughs> yeah, and we are getting some new characters, including um, Golden Glider. And uh, it's, it's once again, they're not cutting back on the gore. And oh, yeah, looks, yeah, even, even in this extraordinarily mm-hmm. red band trailer where, yeah, he has this whole opening montage when he's talking about, you know, his childhood. And we don't need to repeat any of the things he said. But, yeah, go to the in the show notes. We'll have the trailer. But please, please watch with caution. <laughs> this is not for you, Nias family. Don't tune into this Kite Man no, trailer. Yeah, not, um, not for the kids. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure. definitely. But this was a fun. Now, when is this when is this coming down the pike? I would uh, imagine pretty soon. 24. And oh, you know, okay. honestly, no, no, no. I'm guessing a lot of these shows are going to be. Them. When we need to fill content, when we have nothing else to do, yeah, which will come up very quickly uh, for all of mm. these, and the, the longer they let that strike go, so yeah, that's wild news about, especially like I said about the the Disney animators starting to unionize. Good for them; they should get <laughs> every nickel uh, from the art that they create. I just, yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, I guess we'll look forward to seeing this next year. Okay, Todd, why don't you tackle this no, this next one? Because as I said in the B roll, meh. Okay. Um, yeah, because you weren't a big Aquaman fan. So I, it rarely does a sequel. Someone didn't like the first one. Don't, way don't you sequel. mean Aqua fan? Yes, Aqua fan. Aquafina. Oh, and we're Aquafina. going to, yes, Aquaman. I do two, like Aquafina. Aquaman 2 got a trailer. Uh, and this movie is looking to be bigger and bolder and pick up exactly where the last movie ended. We see that Aquaman has a child and um, has essentially brought back Black Manta is the big bad in this movie. Remember, Black Manta's dad was killed and he blames Aquaman for this. Apparently, he's coming back stronger than ever due to uh, a black trident, which uh, essentially there was multiple tridents of power bases, the different kingdoms. Aquaman is the king of Atlantis, not the king of all of the seven seas so oh, because okay. of that in ocean so there are different um ruling uh kingdoms and such kingdoms F- of the ocean. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah he's not the, well and his brother is the ocean master which or which you know, well yeah really it looked like yeah to become the ocean master yeah patrick, um, patrick wilson who's obviously a very iconic yes. supervillain presence i guess i just yep. don't really get that scared by patrick wilson even though he's no. in all those insidious movies no yeah, not no, insidious he's, he's the conjuring he's the conjuring sorry yes, we mix that up um, all the time Exactly. And because of this, uh, apparently there's a threat that's bigger than Arthur himself. So he has to team up with his brother Orm, breaks him out of jail and they go and have an adventure. And the best part about this trailer is we get him on the seahorse, folks, and it looks badass. I love it. I'm all in. The Aquaman movie was an adventure movie. It was kind of like going to find the thing. And that's all it was. It was dumb fun. It wasn't thing. trying to be anything darker. Than, and I think it was lighter fare. And mm-hmm. this movie did over a billion dollars. Um, it was big overseas. So I'm hoping this is just fun. Again, I hope it doesn't get dark. And I hope it uh, whoa, 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 ends whoa, whoa, whoa. up the DCU on a high note. It was big overseas. How did it do undersea? Under the seas? Uh, I don't know if they have cinemas. So, you know, I don't know. Under really the sea. Under, under the sea. Da, 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 da. There'll they be no accusations. Really in the movie. Yeah. Just friendly yeah. crustaceans under the sea. I, yeah. I, I, you know what? I, in fairness, big, you know, big blue sky hole under the sea. CGI mess fest. Okay. For me, I guess I'm so blah, 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 with DC. And again, they're on their way out. So to me, you know, we saw Flash, we talked about it last week, Flash, biggest disa- biggest box office disaster of all time. Uh Blue Beetle, Todd was Todd was rooting for Blue Beetle, but it didn't it didn't make a dent, but we didn't didn't necessarily think that it would. Um I I just see this as being a huge failure. I don't know, and it just it just really doesn't interest me. I'm sorry. That is my personal take. That's yeah. 
okay. If there are hardcore Aqua fans out there, they're they're going to be mm. delighted because they're going to give them exactly what they're looking for. Yeah. Um. But this is this is to me this is just the death rattle. I don't know. I just don't think it's gonna it's gonna well, make it's a the bit. end. So it doesn't have to do anything other than just not be yeah. a complete failure. Which ultimately, yeah. when it's coming out, Charlie, there's very little entertainment going to be out. So no, it has that, no that, competition. That is a good people point. People want things to do so. And, and and when you say failure, I don't know what failure is any day any anymore when it comes to movies. <laughs> Todd, Todd, the the Flash was a failure. So there it's you not go. Twenty night. It's not twenty night. It's not twenty nineteen where Miss Marvel made a billion dollars. Miss Marvel true. would be lucky to make yeah. four hundred million probably. And we say that's that that's flash. very it's just, true. It's sure. just how superhero movies are. They're just not the biggest thing yeah. on the block anymore. They right. are going to be so so, and they're only going to capture typically the hardcore and the curious, uh, right. which is which is the norm more than Hard, the, the rule. Hardcore curious. Yeah. Aaron, Aaron, yeah. Aaron where, where, where do you land with Aquaman, so to speak? I, yeah, you know, I'm concerned that, you know, superhero fatigue has been mentioned, you know, it's a dreaded word, but I, I, I kind of, I'm starting to feel it a little bit, sadly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I will say Aquaman for me looks kind of like a mixed bag because there are certain elements I'm excited for and certain elements that I'm not. The biggest thing for me with James Gunn doing his reboot of the DC universe, what stakes can there possibly be in this That's movie? my point. Because That's you, my you point. know, yeah. yeah, you know, it's all going to go away and get rebooted here in a second so there's no long-lasting uh repercussions or anything that'll necessarily happen in this movie but on the other hand i love jason momoa's portrayal of aquaman i think he a lot of life into it yeah yeah. (laughs) i I really love that but part of the exciting thing especially with them teasing the fact that he has a kid in this film large part of the um version of Aquaman Momoa is playing is based off of the, you know, hardcore gritty nineties Aquaman. The hook and that hand. Was, the hook hand. Suit. That was all. Yeah, yeah. That was all about his kid. Like that was all tied into him having mm. a kid with, with, with the hook hand and everything. So Peter David, his, I believe wrote that book. I think uh, yeah. I can't go wrong with Peter David, so. big, big yeah. Star Trek author, by the way, if yeah. you're not aware of. Yeah. Big yeah. time. So I'm, I'm kind of excited to see if they go in that direction. That, that, that was, that was my biggest takeaway from the trailer is I kind of hope to see something like that. Gotcha. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. Uh, is it too much to say every superhero film has to have stakes? Meaning, like they have to lead into something greater? Because as we're seeing with Star Wars, I would say Star yeah. Wars has made their money on mm-hmm. going over the minutia of things that don't really matter. It's we know what mm-hmm. happened. They don't have stakes mm-hmm. per se, but and it is, and it's, but people love those things. I just I think I, 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 I think Marvel has has really broken the mold for all of them. It's it's set mm-hmm. that bar too high that everybody's oh this is the oh you got to watch it fifty times so you get this this and that and wait for the stinger and then the mm-hmm. show comes out and that, it's too it's too deep. It's it's mm-hmm. it, it, it's it's not surface you know it, the surface level aspect of the superhero genre for this generation it has kind of been burnt burned at the stake you know there's yeah. it could it could take you know it could take till we're in our you know we're old really old men and watching it and stuff is just like oh i go to see a movie and it's like a, you know a saturday morning serial kind of deal and you could just mm-hmm. go and enjoy the movie and you didn't have to see you know the mcu you know now has you know 150 films in it you know what i mean in shows and mm-hmm. oh you know you're gonna have to get the crazy charlie day you know thing with the string in it the the, the conspiracy map to know mm-hmm. what the hell's going on so it's yeah. it is it's the snake that's eaten its own tail it's 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 become what it's beheld it's the harvey dent it lived long mm-hmm. enough to become the villain <laughs> yeah. yeah who knew we didn't really need this and it made us yeah. actually kind of ruin the experience of just yeah. enjoying a film yeah. on its own it, it yeah. just well, can't be yeah, it just can't be done it, it doesn't have to be like a big end of the world sort of thing either. We just need to care about the characters. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know? And you can do that without saying what's next. You can say, did they mm-hmm. deliver? Did you have a good experience? Did they have a mm-hmm. good arc? And did you enjoy the experience? And, right. and, mm-hmm. it's, and it's really, yeah, we are in a different world because now we all have this thing. And so many other things are fighting for our attention with 85 mm-hmm. services. So ultimately right. maybe it's good not to have everything be 85 parts. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. You know, if you, if you hearken back to things that we enjoyed in our youth, Star Wars was three movies and it was spread out over six years. And we love each one of them for different ways. And everybody has a favorite. Empire's my favorite. Jedi is Todd's favorite. Other people feel, you know, strongly about the first one because it was such a cultural phenomenon when it happened. And then there was next to nothing for 15 years. And it was fine. It was absolutely fine with people. 
Yeah, we only got one Spawn movie. I mean, and I, I, I'm assuming it's because it can't be made better, right? Yeah, it was. It was, you know, it, they, it, it was the, the classic, hey, stop drilling, you struck oil. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, and speaking of oil, uh, so see this movie. It's coming out in December if you're interested. Yeah. There'll be nothing going on, so see it. I'm about to Todd. It'll, it'll be on Max. It'll this be a Max three months later. This can't outperform the color purple, which also comes out at Christmas time. I don't know. You know, never know. The power of Oprah compels you. Uh, that's, what, that's what you say at the exorcism these days. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lord and Savior, nailed Oprah, it. Mr. Let, me get, let me get my hammer because you nailed it. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, now, something else that's coming up sooner that is, um, it's 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 Mike Flanagan. If you don't know who he is, has really done great at it, uh, basically adapting a lot of properties um, for television and Netflix. He's he's um, done a bunch of different horror series that are really loved. Um, and he is adapting um, a new series based on um, the, the fall of house of Usher for um, Netflix. It's an eight part series and it looks amazing. Um, the, the cast includes Carla Gugino, uh, Mary McDonald, Carl Lumley, Mark Hamill, and Bruce Greenwood. And essentially this is taking a modernized take of the house of Usher, basically a modern family who is very corrupt very mm-hmm. powerful, almost like mm-hmm. succession. And this is about their downfall. Um, right. This, it looks really, really good. It's eight parts. It's going to be uh, coming out October um, 13th, I believe. Oh, it's and very drop all at once. Yeah. It's Netflix. Yeah. So, oh, so um, it's, I, uh, yeah. W- when I saw it said Netflix, I didn't know if it was a TV film, but this is like a 10 episode thing happening. So it's, so it's a 10 hour film. So enjoy, enjoy your 10 hour film. Um, uh, but yeah. The, yeah trailer was absolutely intense and we were april and i were watching it together and she usually just kind of is in the back because i was watching on my laptop right before i came down here and she's usually doing something else but she's catching this she's like peering over like what is going because she loved the 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 uh was it the haunting of hill house she was totally into that yes. where it just kind of passed me by but like you said same creative force uh huge cast but just the gore oh my god this they were pulling no punches with this deal so look it looks pretty phenomenal i have no doubt we'll watch it with the lights out you know i'll be cowering in my my blanket because it looks pretty scary but i'm down with it i'm totally here for it that sounds awesome yeah aaron i, I know you chase ghosts and find mm-hmm. want to find ghosts <laughs> but are you into horror because not everybody is not really like my wife does not like horror but she loves the paranormal um where do you stand uh, I, you know what? I love intelligent horror. I love horror that doesn't necessarily rely too much on blood and gore. Um, I love the horror that makes you think, you know, that really, really question, you know, what, you know, what is reality and that sort of thing. You know, cosmic horror is very high on my list. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm intrigued by this one. It's, it's really interesting. You know, Netflix has had a lot of um, uh, uh, down, uh, uh, not hits and a lot of really good hits. And it's, it's kind of interesting to see where this is going to fall. Um, yeah. Cool. For the, the X to fall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this will be on my list to check out. I watched some of the house. Uh, uh, on, uh, what is it? The, the um, haunting of Hill house. Other, yeah, haunting of Hill house. Also the, ha- the haunting of Bly Manor was the other series. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll see how this one goes, but very excited mm-hmm. for more spooky content this Sweet. fall, which leads me into the next story, which is kind of spooky. More spooky than scary, um, but it's cool. And that the fact that we've got the Buffy the Vampire Slayer uh, cast making an audio series um, with most of the original cast members returning. And um, and actually, it's kind of neat because Christopher Golden, who's wrote a lot of the Buffy comics back in the day, is actually yeah. behind this. Oh, that's and, awesome. Uh, James, that's crossover. And it's focused. This mm-hmm. one's going to be focused on James Marster. And it's going to have a different Slayer in the lead. Um, Ooh, and it's going to be really I? neat how they manage this. There's going to be some new characters as well. Um, and it will be, um, essentially, this was something that was created uh, or a uh, thought of a long time ago and this is the perfect time to do it because actors are out of business they can do audiobooks and because this is and i'm assuming this is licensed through disney because they own it's fox um they own it yeah um no no no, wait no uh buffy was on the wb was it owned by fox oh the movie the movie was a fox movie wasn't it yeah Mm -hmm. now i'm lost yeah i can't remember i'm not sure who's Um, got the rights well, Disney actually owns the rights. Okay. Um, 
Uh, yeah, Disney owns the rights. I can't remember how they got them. D- Disney uh, owns everything I, now. Yeah, it's, it, it was it was a it was a it, it was the typical Bill Gates. Uh, hey, I didn't get rich by writing a lot of checks. I'm sure they I'm sure they <laughs> yeah. beat somebody up for it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly. So this is going to be on Audible October 12th. Um, Sarah Michelle Geller will not be on this, of course. Um, and it's going to set in an alternate reality where Buffy Summers never existed. So I love these alternate tales. You can yeah, do whatever what you want. You can have a lot yeah. of fun with it. Yeah. Um, and the great thing about this also is because a lot of these actors are now very old. I mean, I have James Mercer playing a vampire who never ages is now in his gotta be 50 to 60 now. Yeah. It's well, I don't hard know to look yeah, the part. I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Dr. Who has been doing these for years. They bring in the actors, they tell more yeah. stories and I like these. Uh, so yeah. this is going to be very fun. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't think I have an audible subscription, so I'll have to see how I can check this out. That's a, well, audible is always, you do it for a month for free and then you get one book. They, they do a credit my wife system. Has a subscri- I think my wife yeah. has a subscription. So, so I, ha- I hop in every once in a while. Like I just grabbed the, I, I enjoy the, um, the star Wars from a certain point of view, they did a, a big, it's a volume of short stories. I'm sure I've talked about it before, but they've done them one for each of the OT and it's, yeah. it's, it's commensurate with 40th anniversary. So the return of the Jedi one just came out and I've been listening to it. It's fun. They have what Mark and I will probably talk about on a hot crown. They have one that's all about uh, Max Rebo and it's very satirical. So yeah, so I definitely get into this kind of stuff. Now the first season of Buffy, we talked about on uh, our Patreon segment, the fact of geek life, it was myself and our, in our uh, cosplay pal, uh, Kelly Gettner for, from uh, Wisconsin, who is a super fan. Um, the first season of that show, much like particularly back in the 90s, any first season of the show was pretty rough. Um, but I understand, and Todd, you and I have even watched a few of the later seasons, because many, many years back when uh, our, our college roommate John was active with us, uh, we did that game where we each picked five episodes of our favorite genre show, and all three of us watched it, and then we talked about it. So we did some episodes of Buffy, but they were definitely not the ones from early on, because the ones from early on were pretty no. like, it was like, you know, Friends plus 902 and O plus Apocalypse Now, you know, <laughs> it's just not a great combo. Um, yeah, but this, but yeah, this sounds without, super cool. The- yeah. Yeah, this is going to be very fun. I, I hope we get more of these things, especially as actors need jobs. So we yeah. get there. Um, Aaron, do you have any specific like things like audio books that have been done on based on things you've loved that expanded uh, a, a fandom? Yeah, I can think of a couple actually. Um, like uh, back in the day, I would watch a lot of the uh, Star Wars audio audio books, uh, like the uh, Jedi Academy, the Courtship of Princess Leia, the, oh, yeah, those, yeah. With, with the full ensemble cast. Those were really great. More recently than that, speaking of James Marston, um he actually did the audiobook for for the Jim Butcher series of books uh Harry oh, Dresden right oh wow yeah, oh cool that's a great way yeah. to check that out because I really yeah. like the TV series and I mm-hmm. wanted to start reading the books because obviously we're not getting any more of the TV show <laughs> yeah yeah James was amazing and I I'm a big James Marston fan I absolutely adore him I got to meet him once at a comic convention a long time ago but yeah us a, too I think yeah yeah lo- we lovely went to a lovely family, man. that was great yeah, yeah, lovely man, uh, and and I'm just such a huge fan, and and I loved his work and Harry Dresden. I'm I'm excited for this. I'm excited to see Spike return. Yeah, it's, it's now th- this is interesting. It does mention here that uh, obviously the the titular star of the the series, Sarah Michelle Geller, the Buffy, mm-hmm. uh, has ruled out involvement in any reboot and is not a part of this. Why I I don't know that we've talked much about this. Why is she so diametrically opposed to to being a part of this again? I think there's too much uh, negative. Uh, connectivity with joss whedon water under Um, the bridge yeah well no joss whedon basically burned everybody uh Uh, he was horrible you know he basically became a monster out i mean i I hate it because i love buffy so much so i essentially have to separate him and i would hope that somebody else could come on and take over the franchise like it's like 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 harry potter uh, like or somebody else like the whole Harry Potter schism with JK yeah, and yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's, Take it out of his yeah. hands, give it to new people and let that mm-hmm. franchise live without him. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, she basically has come out and saying, yes, the, the it was a, a negative experience for most. No, that, 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 that is too bad. It's, it is mm-hmm. too bad. But anyway, let's not uh, dwell on Josh, but let's get back to talking about star Wars. We, we <laughs> loved Donald Glover as young Lando. Absolutely adored him. Uh, he crushes and everything we did. He does April and I, uh, it was her first watch through. We just did community, which was his, real breakout um and yeah that 2018 movie which a lot of people have different feelings about i thought it was fine didn't, didn't really bug me at all um but yeah there's there's a lot of roundabout going going around about the creative direction of bringing him back as that character and again everything is pie in the sky it's like there's a report of such and such okay when the hell are you gonna make it nobody's writing and nobody's acting um but donald is 
not returning in a new series, but in a film, um, which I think it would be better as a series. It, I, I think we've talked about this in the past. Lando, I, I mean, Lando really seems to lend himself to more of an adventure of the week kind of deal. Little heist here, little heist there, romance, more capes, you know, uh, <laughs> which is that's that, that's Todd's go to when it comes to Lando talking about capes. Space Colt 45. Mm-hmm. Space Colt yeah. 45. <laughs> um, because, yeah, it's uh, him and his, uh, his uh, brother, uh, Stephen Glover, who was the executive producer of Atlanta which I've never watched. I've just, it's probably one yeah, of those great on shows. My, it's on my, I'll watch uh, it next year. Premiere. Yeah. I'll watch it next year when there's nothing new to watch. I'll watch Atlanta and a million yeah. other shows like we're watching, you know, breaking, like we just finished breaking bad. We should talk about in a minute. Um, but yeah, where do you, what do you think guys? Is this a better move than a TV show? I, I don't think so. I don't know. Aaron. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you see what I mean? It's yeah, tough. It's, it's tough. Uh, it, you know, I mean, it, with the, the long form of the TV series is great because you have a better opportunity to explore the more nuanced performances to really get a feeling for what true, the characters true. are going through. Um, and, and I think you're right. I, I think he would be more uh, interesting to see him in like a monster villain of the week or, or heist of the week kind of thing. Um, if, I mean, I just, you know, in, in, in a movie – it's hard to say. What can we? Where can we go with Lando that we haven't already gone? We got the heist movie. We yep. got the the classic trilogy. You know him going from scoundrel to hero um, and everything. So I, I don't know. Yeah, it means, yeah it's it it's t- it's tough to say what they can really still do with the character because then we saw you know in his older age he was back with the re- he, he helped you know in the, the rise of skywalker he kind of moved the plot along and, and helped things about there so um yeah I, I i'm still in the camp of the the tv show myself todd what about you so i, I was i think i mentioned this charlie um billy d williams was 43 when they did empire strikes back right donald glover is 39 you cannot do a young lando when he's obviously not that much younger so well but would, but uh, that was but that was billy d in 1980 uh, you know what i mean so it's it's not to say that you it, correct you but could, you, i mean you could portray him as younger young, than he is younger than his pre- 20 last, year old yeah he, he's i don't yeah. want his origin story i don't yes, want true, that true. I, don't, I think solo failed because they tried to basically say well here's how he became who he is and it's like the origin story of most people is okay, but it's rarely as exciting as who they are now because you get to see them as a fully formed person and how they manage. And you can do flashback does if you want, because we know Star Wars loves you know, get injured and that's how oh, you yes. get the story. I'm perfectly fine with that. Now, I think what you can do is just say, we're going to do, uh, put him in the Mando time frame, like post Jedi or just right after post Jedi. What did he do? Or, right. Um, how did he become, I mean, cause I think anything in between, I mean, you potentially could do something. What did he do in between the solo movie there to basically become like the, the big head cl- guy cloud city of, dude. You know, yeah. cloud city. That's fine. You could also do, what did he do between empire and Jedi to redeem himself, right. get himself in a better position. But I think if you explore those area eras, I don't want the, once again, another era, a movie set before a new hope. Yeah. Um, to me, that's tiresome era. It's once again, where are the stakes? I don't know. You get to see that he chose between a blue and a red cape. I don't know. Like I said, important? what what's my catch all? You know, what did he have the Wednesday after Empire? What did he have for breakfast? It's it's That's got to be a six part novel series. That's yeah, so important stuff. It, yeah, you do it in an era where we know nothing about him. We don't. It doesn't have to be him meeting and revisiting all the people we know. Just have him do some things that explore different parts of Star Wars we don't know and make him more interesting. And, and we take away, oh, we learned a lot more about him, not how we became the person he is. That's what right. I prefer. I don't know. We shall see. But anyway, as I'm fond of saying, it doesn't really matter because nothing's getting made right now anyway. But we still need stuff to talk about, so we will speculate until the cows come home. All right. Well, that's the end of the news. Todd, time to get out that Fuber app, that feeble Uber app. We've got to get down to the geek easy where we can talk about stuff we're enjoying in nasty town. Skugville awaits. Let's go for it. Talk nerdy to me. Talk to me. We're sitting in the Geek Easy, cover band's playing, drinks are poured, and we are ready to get our nerd on. So, Aaron, what mm-hmm. have you been geeking out about in the world of uh, print or on the screen? Um, well, right now, uh, I've been reading a lot of the uh, the Witcher books lately, actually. Mm-hmm. Very cool. um, I'm on the, uh, I think it's the Sword of Power, which is the second anthology series, right before we get to the main bulk of the book. 
Um, and I'm kind of excited for that. And that's, at, and, and that's, I'm doing a lot of um, research for a character in that because next year, my wife and I, we're going to be getting into LARP for the first time. Oh, wow. um, we decided that we weren't nerdy enough. Got uh, so we, figured, we figured let's go all in. So um, like, we're really excited about this uh, uh, Dragon Fest, uh, which is a LARP in Germany has made its way over here to America now. Oh, and um, it's, it's called Dragon Fest us in Pennsylvania. So we're getting ready to go there and I'm going to be playing a witcher uh, for that experience. Wow. And, oh, and my wife is, my wife is working on a token character. She's probably going to be doing like a elf lore master type thing for that. So we're getting ready for that. That's kind of been our big focus aside from working on USS Rhapsody and getting our Star Trek stuff set up. We're really excited for that. Um, and then as far as comic books and stuff I've been reading, uh, I'm starting to get into some um, some of the older books that I've always been wanting to read, but I haven't gotten around to. I uh, just picked up Torment, uh, Spider-Man Torment for the first oh, time. Oh, wow. Which, yeah, going back to the 90s, to McFarlane, oh, yeah. that, that first yep. run of the Spider-Man. Yep. Adjectiveless Spider-Man book, yeah. I love those yep. covers. They're so yeah. beautiful. Oh, yeah. Yes. Gorgeous work. So that's <laughs> And uh, doing a lot of the uh, classic Chris Claremont X-Men stuff. Uh, I oh, think God. Uh, the, it's the greatest. The more like. Yeah, the Morlock Massacre and stuff like that. I've been reading a lot of that right now. Oh, yeah. And and yeah. we just finished, uh, as far as watching goes, uh, the live action One Piece on Netflix, which was how is that? I'm curious. I have never watched the anime. It is so good. Like it, it it's yeah. it's really a fantastic adaptation. Like they tried they tried to succeed with Cowboy Bebop a little bit, and I, I feel like they got in the ballpark, but you know it just wasn't everybody's thing. Yeah. But with One Piece, it is just it, it's it's amazing because it's it's such an absurd anime in a lot of ways, like in a good way, an absurd anime in a lot of ways. You didn't think it would translate to live action as well as it has. Um, but I'm, but, but we've been really enjoying it. So that's kind of been what we've been into lately. So, oh, that's <laughs> so cool. I'm a huge Witcher fan. So I, 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 mm-hmm. I have never read the books. I've been curious again to him. I love the mm-hmm. game series and I've really enjoyed the Netflix series. So, um, the books would be in the next place and there's obviously graphic mm-hmm. novels. So I, I would, you know, I, it, I have some, so I'm going to start reading those and the one piece I am excited to check that out too. So thank nice. you for your recommendations. Good deal. Sure, absolutely. <clears throat> All right, Todd, we're up to the, the very excitement of Ahsoka. Yes. Ahsoka episode five. So, um, this is going to be a tricky one. So spoilers ahead, everyone. Spoilers uh, ahoy. Yeah, bam, bam. Are you up to speed on Ahsoka? Uh, I'm not, but go ahead and you can, you can do, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. Okay. Well, if are you planning to watch it or not? We've been watching it. I'm think I'm on episode three, right? We, oh yeah, no, we, we won't four, spoil. So. We're gonna keep it light. We're we're, <laughs> we're, not, we're not those guys. We're not those guys. Like, okay. Um. Yeah. So I will say this episode, um, is is a lot of people's like episode that just blow them away. This was not my episode, but they've already ruined it online. To be honest, Disney has already shown. Do you, I mean, do you know what the big reveal was? Yeah, I've, I've I've seen a lot of it. Yeah, so okay. that's yeah. why I'm not so, too worried about spoilers. I got exactly. a lot of it. Exactly. Yeah. A week later, I here it was Disney big. T- so this was yeah, right. all about Anakin in mm-hmm. the worlds between. Right. Um, I struggle with this new trope that's been brought in to basically say this is our way to retcon anything we want. Right. And then the guy pulls somebody in and saves them from death, and I truly don't get it. And I feel like charlie i said this i was like what all next time i see anakin i just want a how i met your mother but hosted by force ghost anakin talking to adult luke and leia telling him all about the great times he had meeting his mother and the fact no, no, that no. he became orphans luke and leia are force ghost now too so it's just a big ghost powwow and then aaron and his buddies will show up and and blast yeah. them all and put them in those exactly. those traps yeah. we'll, we'll do what we have to yeah, yeah exactly ghosts Star Wars except that are not force ghosts right bustin mm-hmm. makes me feel Feel good. Yeah. Well, yeah, the force ghosts. Pe- people who don't have the force can't see the force ghosts. That's the thing. So they're yeah. not really like like ghost ghosts. But yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. Uh, you know, Mark, who's my partner over in Holocron, our, our Star Wars show here on this network, uh, has had very strong feelings about not talking about the show because of the strike. Which you know what. I respect that. That is his vibe. That is his program. I'm down with that. I feel like he might be softening in that regard. We've had some conversations that we might kind of dip back in because he is all about this right now. Um, But conversations that John, uh, our other college roommate, and Todd and myself have had, uh, I know that uh, John in particular really is not enjoying this. Todd, you're kind of floating somewhere in the middle. I'm, it's I'm, okay. It doesn't really yeah. make me. It was like this is not the best, great best yeah. thing. It looks I'm, cool. I yeah. But the storyline is less like. Eh. 
you know, I'm enjoying it through the lens of my wife, who loved Rebels. It was the first real Star Wars thing we consumed that was new when we first got together, so almost 10 years ago. She loves the Ahsoka character. She's read some of the books. She's really into it. So so I'm enjoying it through that lens. But as far as super great Star Wars-y stuff, um, I'm going to have to side with something that John has said, is that, you know, Star Wars has lost its big, boombastic, uh, you know, uh, cinema, cinematic vibe. You know, John said, "Hey, it's it's a bunch of people walking around in circles uh, on a tiny little you know green screen, and that's what Star Wars has turned into for him." And I, I don't know that I'm, I would pursue it quite that far, but it, it, it has, uh, yeah. You know, Star Wars TV peaked with Luke Skywalker at the end of Mando season two, and that was three years ago. And since then, we've had subsequent programs, and not one of them has just made me go whoa and really stand up and be blown away. Um, I've enjoyed things. I'm not, I don't hate things. I Okay, I hated the book of Boba Fett, but I think that's probably a pretty common attitude. Um, but yeah, as far as being absolutely blown away, I, I, I love Mark's enthusiasm. I get that he digs it. I'm with you. Uh, Your passion. And, yeah, I, I'm with the passion because it's the passion that, you know, people like Aaron and I have for Star Trek. And, just, you know, hopefully we're not we're not, you know, complete fanboy eyeballs that when something's terrible, we can say, well, oh, that's really not so good. But we're really very exuberant about things. But, um, yeah, even as the Star Wars heavy. Um, yeah, this is just kind of like eh, when, when are we going to finally talk about a movie again? When are we going to have a big? Yeah, I think the biggest issue with I have is this is just Rebel Season 5. It's right. not really mm-hmm. Absolutely. anything other than that. And because of that, it's serving a very small audience that is hyper love that hyper loves it. But everybody else kind of feel like, okay, I, why are I still nobody's still giving me a reason why I'm excited about meeting Ezra and Thrawn. Right. Um, people, and people that, that, point, are, that feels like a failure at this point. I mean, the the, the show numbers wise is is still apparently knocking things out. It's doing great. It's doing great minutes, uh, you know. Which I, again, I've always been a little nebulous about how do you really judge what makes a successful streaming program. But I don't know. But it goes on. People the, the, signing up yeah. for it and staying with the service. That's right. all it is. We don't want to lose people. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So anyway, we will find out. This was episode five of eight. If I'm not mistaken. Um, so we have more to go. And obviously this episode ended in a cliffhanger. Sorry, Aaron. Uh, but it's a cliffhanger. It's okay. Uh, it's okay. and, and they cliffhanger their way into the next episode. So you will find out. All right. Todd, Unless you're uh, spoils it for you. <laughs> you're also uh, watching a show that that I have watched and greatly enjoyed. Yeah. So a show that I was really into. Uh, I don't know. I, I The way the show has been built up is it's very hard to really classify as a specific genre. Uh, the bear. So basically the bear is on Hulu. It's about a chef who takes over his brother who committed suicides business, family run business, but they were, they had issues and essentially were estranged and he's coming back to run the business. It was left in his will for him. He has a sister. And there's a lot of drama. A oh, uh, lot, of, lot of, a lot of broken, super uh, Chicago. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. It's, it's, it's basically running a sandwich shop. Chicago um, beef. That, yeah. It's and I just finished beef. season one, <laughs> but I was, I was hesitant to get into the show because it's not a comedy. It's, it's labeled as a comedy. There is very few comedic elements about it. This is a show about drama, dark loss, yeah. uh, anxiety. And that's why I did not want to get this. I have a lot of anxiety in my life um, that I don't want to show that's just going to feed into it. But I decided I'm going to hop in because I love cooking shows. I love the world. I, I cook a lot. I, I like the world of cuisine and I watch enough Food Network that I know a lot about the culture and the way prepare. So I like that aspect of it. So it layers it on. Also with the characters, they're very unique and different. Um, it's very harsh. So if you don't like, you know, uh, certain words, you're going to get a lot of that. But yes. it's it, I, I, Yeah, it feels very authentic. Uh, like Shameless, which was the main star of this. I can never get the guy. Jeremy Chad White or Chad Jeremy White. The guy who was who was Lip on Shameless, if you watch Shameless, which was on Showtime for a number of years. Yeah. It's very it's very gritty in the exact same way. It, it's almost a sister series in some ways. Um, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's, a, it's got it's a, a vibe. tough show to watch, though, because it deals with anxiety and dealing with, uh, you know, his, yeah. you know, loss and um, addiction and all of these things. And um, I was not sure if I was going to glom on to it, but I loved the show. Good. I ate it up. And I, what I want to see is more dramas that are only a half hour. They right. pack so much. It's so lean. 
on. I mean, you lean. don't waste any time You're making a lot of cooking right references. You go, well, they, you ate it up. It's very lean. <laughs> absolutely, it's spicy. Uh, it's got a taste of brine. But no, I, I feel brine. like so many shows mm, they beef. get used to the hour format that we got from TV. That I feel yeah. like there's just a lot of filler wasted effort and you can just make it get just cut off all that grizzle and fat and get something that you just can't stop eating and that's what the show is i loved how it ended because i'm like wow they're going there and it's going to be interesting on where they go next and uh, you love it because the second season has been knocked out and you do meet the mother character and you do find out the idea i can't remember if you learn the actor who plays the deceased brother I can't remember if you ended up seeing. Oh him, yeah, but. yeah, it's 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 what's his name from? It's, uh, yeah, it's John Bernthal. Dead and the Punisher. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's in all the fla- he's in lots of flashbacks. I couldn't remember if the flashbacks, but the mother ends up being uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. If I'm not mistaken, oh, really? or was it Judith oh, Light? Yeah. yeah, but it was just in a very. <laughs> or was it? It's either Judith just, Light or Jamie well, Lee Curtis. <laughs> both of those women in in later years play very gritty roles. I mean, look at Jamie oh, Lee, know. and you know, look at Judith Light was in one of these some show recently where she was like oh my god uh, i think she was in um uh that was that sh- what's that show on peacock the uh the one with um natasha leone poker face poker face yeah, yeah she was in an episode of that where she was really great so but yeah, yeah. we we enjoyed that show too but yeah it is it is extraordinarily gritty it's a lot just, of comedy folks if you yeah. look for a good laugh time and a laugh track yeah. you're not gonna get for the show you, you there may be something happens that's funny but it'll usually yes. be at, at the detriment of one of the other characters something bad will typically follow yes yeah exactly so well cool all right well i'm, I'm gonna go kind of quickly because I'm, I'm dovetailing off something i talked about last week uh breaking bad is our new find uh, I told you my friends Tamara and Jay that this is their Star Wars. They loved it. So when she – Tamara is one of my oldest friends, lives in the neighborhood here. When I told her we were watching this, she was just like, oh, my God, you're not going to be able to stop. And we did. We blasted through. We finished the show proper yesterday. And I feel like uh, – Aaron, do you have any familiarity with the show? Have you watched it? Yes. I've seen, uh, I think, the first two seasons. Okay. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, wow. And, yeah, wow. Yeah. That's, that's, that's enough. Well, you know what? In <laughs> fairness, I, I had false starts with this show two or three times that I watched the first mm-hmm. two or three, and I was like, eh, and then moved on to something two or three else. Three seasons? No, episodes. two or three episodes. Oh, okay. God, I yeah. can see that. Once so it just like didn't, get, season, didn't get hooked. That would be really hard to like yeah. step away. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, that's it. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I, it was pretty spectacular. Uh, and I feel like I, I knew how the show ended because it was one of those, you know, 10 greatest endings of shows and they show an image of the particular ending of the show, which I won't bother to mention, but I thought, yeah, I was pretty sure this was going to happen. Um, but as we're watching, um, you know, it's like, and part of the breaking, because it's on Netflix, part of the breaking bad collection. The other one is in 2019, there was a follow-up, uh, Netflix, pro- Netflix produced film, which was apparently also in theaters uh, on a limited, I never run, watched it. which was called El Camino. And it was the story of Jesse Pinkman after the series, yeah. uh, and involved his arc during that last half of the fifth season where he was imprisoned, uh, by a character played by Jesse Plemons, who they brought back, who was about 60 pounds heavier. So it's kind of like, Todd. okay, suspension of disbelief. Yeah. Another great Todd <laughs> character. Yeah. And that character was a psychopath. Oh my God. Yeah. You know, he just, he shot a kid in cold blood. So it's and killed him. So yeah, just not a great character. Um, so that you know that that's a two hour movie was pretty intense and and with that. But we started uh, we started Better Call Saul today, and Better Call oh, Saul that. No. ran longer than Breaking Bad, and it is a prequel yeah. set between two thousand and two going up to two thousand and eight, which is when Breaking Bad started. So old cell phones, all this different stuff. But I was doing a little reading on Wikipedia, and yeah, you get nearly every breaking bad character gets like a little touch even even you know Brian Cranston shows up at one point uh Jesse P- Jesse Pinkman uh is you know, Aaron Paul is in there and then of course you get it sounds like you get a big uh big uh run with um with Gus Fring, Gus, Gus Fring yeah, yeah with uh with uh, Giancarlo Esposito who is the major villain of the series so um wow i just one of those like i can't Was believe he really, i really though so charlie was he really though? No, I mean, question. that's just, yeah, that's just the thing. He yeah. was, but he was the mustache twirling villain. But yeah, at the end of it with Breaking Bad, who is really the bad guy? Because you, yeah. yeah, you watch this arc of Walter White, like, I got to do these things. I can't afford, you know, to, I'm not going to survive through cancer all the way to his line in the final season. You know, I'm talking about building an empire. You know, he just fully embraced being evil. Um, it's it's compelling storytelling. He's like Luther. He is. Oh, he's yeah. absolutely like Luther. Yeah. Well, I think, I think even 
even watching one season of that, you know that he's not a, it, when you watch that first episode where he, you know, chokes a guy with a bike lock, you know that he's not a good guy. <laughs> he means well. Yeah, he means well. Yes, he really, he, he had, you know what? He had good intentions, thus the road to hell is paved with. But anyway, uh, all three of those programs are available on Netflix. So if you are the other person who's not watched it besides me, please go check it out with my highest recommendation. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, that takes us out of the Geek Easy. Todd, time to get out of that Air Qantas app. We've got to get down to land down under. Hologram Tina and the mutants await for us to enra- in, 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 in rival them and in, enrapture them with the tale of a murder in Venice. So let's do it. Welcome to another edition of Thunderdome. <laughs> Thank you, Tina. We're sitting in the Thunderdome where the mutants have been gathered for a topic or a game to be entertained. And this week, we are talking about 2023's A Murder in Venice. Um, In post-World War II Venice, Poirot, now retired and living in his own exile, reluctantly attends a seance. But when one of the guests is murdered, it is up to the former detective to once again uncover the killer. They pull me back in! (laughs) Film by Kenneth Breno, where he's going into classic Agatha Christie tales, um, the first was, I believe, Murder on the Orient Express, leading into a Death on the Nile, and mm-hmm. then Murder in Venice. Um, a little bit about uh, our leading man, Hercule Perrault, Hercule Perrault. He's he's Herqu- a Belgian Herqu- detective. Hercule. <laughs> yes, he's he is a uh, he's a Belgian detective. Um, he was introduced in uh, first by Agatha Christie in 1920s, The Mysterious Affair at Styles. 1920. Last appearance was in. Curtain in 1975. Uh, there have been uh, essentially, this is amazing, about 35 different actors who have portrayed Hercule Perot. He's James um, Bond. <laughs> exactly. He has been in movies, uh, you know, starting, I believe his first appearance in the movies was in the 40s. And um, he has been on everything. Everyone has a favorite actor who has portrayed him. Um, and he's best known for being, having, you know, kind of a hoity like Belgian man who always gets mistaken for being French and a fantastic mustache. Now, hold Um, on. We neither saw Belgian waffles or French fries. So I am going to point of order. He's, he's a, he's a fake. No, it's not true. He is. I, yes. Point of order. Lisa stinks. Yes. Uh, So this movie cost $70 million, a cast of millions and bajillions, but yes, Um, yes, this movie um, is, we just saw it just out now and uh, based on, I believe a Halloween party is the name of the actual Agatha Christie work. So I had never seen or, or, or watched or read uh, the specific story before. I don't know if it's been adapted on screen before. Maybe it has. But for me, it was all new. So let's go from there. Totally. So really quick, Aaron, you you professed that you are a big uh, fan. So mm-hmm. of just Agatha Christie, of Poirot, of anything specific. So uh, just tell us about that a little bit. Well, Her- Hercule Poirot. I-, I love Hercule Poirot. I mean, you have to respect the mustache. I mean, it's 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 it's, it's, it's life, it's life like three, goals. Three. Right? It's it's here. You're watching mm-hmm. here to here to here, yep. and it was revealed, at least in this film series, that his mustache carries uh, covers up horrible scars he got during World War One because mm-hmm. he fought in the trenches. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. but uh, yeah, it scarred his face, but he still has good uh, mustache distribution. Very impressive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Agatha Christie, uh, phenomenal writer. Uh, I think she's with the best selling fictional writer uh, uh, to date, if I remember correctly. But Gotta absolutely be, yeah. huge fan of hers. Um, always love her. Cupero originally started watch getting into it. Uh, the old masterpiece theater um, yes. specials. I would watch that all the time with my grandmother. Some of my fondest memories of watching those shows with her. Oh, awesome. And, and I, I love that version of the character. And I really enjoy uh, what Ken, Ken Branovic has done with this version of him. Yeah, David Suchet is is a hard one to go against. It's kind of like who's your favorite mm-hmm. Doctor Who in a lot of ways. Who's your favorite? Because uh, you know Alfred Finney, uh, Albert Finney had done uh, the role as well. You know, one of the biggest actors at the time, mm-hmm. and so many others have portrayed him. Um, and I don't know, Aaron has have you seen this specific um, story adapted before, or is this your first introduction to it? I don't think I have. I'm familiar with the book. Uh, I know it's, I think it's the third to final of the Hercule Poirot series. I know there are some differences from this in the book because the originally the book actually takes place. uh, Sorry, excuse me. The book takes place in England. Um, Oh, okay. 
Yeah. So they, the, the, out of all three movies, this is the one that they've taken the most artistic liberty with overall. Mm, gotcha. Yeah. Well, it, it, and it certainly pays off uh, setting wise mm-hmm. because it's, it's very, uh, you know, the, the, the haunting aspect of it and the, the dark, you know, the, the night where it's always raining and the, 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 the city sinking into the sea, uh, mm-hmm. all very, all very scary and mysterious without a doubt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and we are not going to, st- st- I, I don't think we should spoil this because I think yes. half Agreed. the fun of se- uh, is just trying to figure out who done it. And it's right. funny they even mm-hmm. mentioned the, the term who done it. Um, right. So it's very simple. Yes. Uh, Hercule Perot is retired. He's in Venice. He doesn't want anyone to bother him. He has a bodyguard actually stop people from following him and right. solve mysteries. He's kind of got groupies and people that want to solve his crime. And even, he's, before, he's even to- before, he didn't have to deal with the internet. He could just have been sitting there Twittering the whole time to keep himself busy. <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it, uh, it was big in 1947. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> the Telegram Times, you know? Telegram really Times. Did, yeah. Boop, 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 boop. social media of the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, he essentially seems happy with his life, although we find in this this movie he's still got demons, and that was a big part of this. People have dealt with you know a lot of time, trying times because world, different wars and things have occurred, and he served in the war, as several characters in this movie did. Um, but he's brought out of retirement because a character I don't know had been introduced before, but basically – and Agatha Christie shows up who You're right, yes. Her a series of books based on a Finnish detective, as they called it out, who she did like 30 books based on him. And she was an acquaintance and she tries to draw him out with a case that makes for a very spooky who done it, which I love. I love the premise that is essentially a scary Big haunted time. place. Big time. Uh, they do a seance with a great role um by um you know you know when you think of characters that were going to be in this michelle yo yeah. is fantastic it's the yona sensor i guess is what you could call it it's the fact that she does a great like um mystic and yes. is brought in and then we just see the whole plot just explode and it's really really fun so mm-hmm. with with that setup um charlie uh you know, I know you are probably not big into these, like, because uh, my I watch uh, the the masterpiece movies with or series with Chris as well. I don't know. Do you have much background with the character? Uh, oh, I've seen all these films, uh, and uh, Agatha okay. Christie, of course, gave us Murder She Wrote, which I never watched. So that's a, Did that's was isn't Did that it? her? Isn't that her? No, Jessica Fletcher. <laughs> no, I thought She's it was Agatha her. Christie's Murder She Wrote. I turned to April no. and I said, "I said, isn't isn't this the show with uh, Angela no. Lansbury?" And she said, "Yes." Well, then I don't no. know what the hell I'm talking about. That's a completely brand modern thing. Take is kind of. I like thought I like, thought it was no. a total spinoff. I'm I'm I am disillusioned. I, that's I think out. it's I'm a out. riff on the idea of Agatha I'm out. Christie. But yes, I can't take it. <laughs> no, I think I, you're the first person that ever has said that. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm like uh, Angela Lansbury. Angela, uh, it's it's a riff right no i i I have seen and enjoyed uh both of these films um yeah but no that's that that's that's kind of where it begins and ends with me um you know i've I've enjoyed kenneth branner's art you know i think he was teed up for the role of obi-wan kenobi in the prequels that would have been an interesting i could have seen it yeah you know yeah yeah i mean but still you know with a script script and direction by george lucas it Probably wouldn't have saved much, but uh, yeah, no, I've enjoyed. I've definitely enjoyed these movies, all the live long while. But this was the first uh, Who Done It uh, spook fest I think that we've had because the murder on the Nile again. It was a big mystery. It, it was a Who Done It. Mummy didn't do it. Yeah, did you say Kwame didn't do it? Oh, the mummy. Didn't oh, I thought you said Kwame, like Kwame killed Patrick Mayor of Detroit in the early 2000s. <laughs> no. We called him the Boogie Mayor because I was a Detroiter native, uh, but. Um, no, I uh, yeah, I've enjoyed these so far, and uh, I and I enjoyed this as well. Well, very cool. Uh, so, Aaron, um, you've seen a bunch of these. You said you've enjoyed mm-hmm. these. So, in regards to this movie, the most uh, and it was funny because there was a part in this movie where um, we weren't sure about the character that Tina Fey plays, which is essentially mm-hmm. the murder author. Who's I don't know if that was made for this. It was a character that that, mm-hmm. that part is in the actual movie or not, but I mm-hmm. love Tina Fey in this. She was phenomenal. I loved her, her role. It was a wonderful. So I don't know if it was or not. If it was awesome, if it wasn't even better. Yeah. The character was in the book. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it was, um, her backstory was essentially the same, but her role in the book was slightly different from what we see in this film. Again, don't want to go into spoiler territory or anything like that, but the the heart of the character already existed in the book itself. 
So mm-hmm. a very important part is figuring out who done it before mm-hmm. the movie tells you. So right. being all honest here, you could be the dumb, dumb guy in the room. We're okay. We're not going to make fun of you. Did you figure out who done it before the end of the movie? Totally yeah. thought it was ghosts. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, my wife, whose name ironically is Jessica Fletcher, by the way. Um, <laughs> we, she's Agatha we, Christie. Uh, I can't believe she it. Ba- ba- yeah, she's based on Agatha Christie. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yes, right? There right? Yeah. There you go. Um, yeah, so she's ironically a huge mystery fan so we we watch mystery movies all the time and it's this game we play between us who's going to figure it out first and she and i i think both had it kind of pegged by the middle of the third act yeah so i we we kind of have this look that we give to each other where we're just kind of like you, you know where we we figured out who it is so third act not our personal best it, it kept us guessing for a while but yeah we 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 figured it out <laughs> Yeah, awesome. it was it was interesting because a lot of these horror films or uh, like mystery films, you always worry, like, do they give the audience enough to get it? Or is it going to be like, oh, we didn't show you 85 things and now mm-hmm. we're bringing them out. I felt like they covered mm-hmm. and the plot and the clues were covered if you were just kind of looking for like those those tropes, those, you know, not red herrings, but the different things. It's like, OK, it's building on to who done it, why did they do it, and what are the motives? And there was one piece at the end that I thought was a really cool part of the who done it and how they done it that I was surprised. Um, and that's all I'll say. I'll just say is kind of one of the standout characters that just was like kind of creepy, but also kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For sure. You get what I'm dropping there? Oh, mm-hmm. it's it, it's so droppid. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So with 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 that, um, in regards to a murder mystery, do you feel like the payoff was worth it? Hmm. hmm. Do you think it was just like, oh, that was like, oh, not not didn't deliver the weight too much build up, and then it was like, oh, really? Or do you, you know think what? it was like, okay, felt. Well, I I think that I would say, I don't know if the payoff necessarily was great. I think what I appreciated even more than the payoff was how much of the movie kind of keeps you guessing at the end. Yeah. You know, because it's, it's, it's a big question of was this a logical explanational situation that has occurred or is there something paranormal going on here? It does a really good job. does a really good job of keeping that ambiguous. And I think that, was the more rewarding payoff, at least for me. No, I agree. I know that was, that was it. Yeah. Cause I was, I was pretty firmly convinced, Hey, they're going in a different direction. Wasn't Mm -hmm. not that I'm remembering explicitly a part of Mm -hmm. the other two films, which is my, Mm -hmm. my greatest familiarity uh, that Mm -hmm. they could have gone in a totally different direction. But uh, yeah, Mm -hmm. in the end of it, it was, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's the walking dead. It's, you know, the greatest enemy is not the dead, but the people who are still alive. And that's what this was Mm -hmm. as well. As we, Mm -hmm. as the, the, the identity of our true villain becomes revealed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it was it was interesting, too, because I haven't seen even though I, I'm a big fan of this. I have for some reason I just have not seen the first two movies that Brennan did. But in regards to this, typically, Perot, you don't get a lot of like deep insight into the character. You see parts of it, but like this was the first one I felt like, wow, they really went in deep and he was struggling mm-hmm. with some things. And I appreciated that quite a bit. And you didn't know to your point is there something else going on? And we didn't feel like the movie gave it away. It let mm-hmm. you take your own thought of like yes or no mm-hmm. you decide not like right that. you decide yeah I totally that. exactly so, the show so very yeah. good so this is mm-hmm. kind of like the unofficial start of spooky season this movie has mm-hmm. a supernatural overtone which i i think is appropriate for the season we're getting it it's a perfect time mm-hmm. for this movie to come out because there's not a lot out there i think it deserves an audience um it's it's a, it's not r-rated so quite honestly this you could take you know, kids that are interested in movies to see this right. and challenge them a little bit. So I recommend yeah. that. Take the family how is it? Uh, how is it? Do, how is it doing this week in box office wise? Are people people digging it, or where, where are they at? It's not doing too great. I think it was like thirty two million. It's so far. It's yeah. like a seventy 70- 
million dollar budget. And I think it's like maybe three, two, three, seven million, something like that. Oh, gotcha. So maybe yeah. About half its budget roughly overseas. Yeah. Um, the good news, it didn't cost three hundred million dollars. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah the, the, the bloated price tag on films is what uh, was a deciding factor. And we already talked about the Flash, but then also, unfortunately, Indiana Jones. Which Indiana just Jones. Broke my heart. Yeah. A, a fast X, mm-hmm. I think. I mean, oh, yeah. Unless, you do, unless you're big mm-hmm. movies, yeah. So I'm glad to see this movie wasn't overinflated from price. I mean, considering the, all the talent involved. Yeah. Um, that's, you know what? I think this movie will find, you know, have legs compared yeah. to others because adult adults like, like Oppenheimer, adults like content that they can see anytime. Like my mom, if I told her, I wish she would no clue this movie's up. Like, mom, you should see this movie. She'll go. So tell yeah, her right. parents. And old folk about this movie, so they'll go. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> t- t- tell those of the olden tale of this film of your. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so very good. So uh, with that, um, how many um, lead pipes to the head will you give this film out of 10? Ouch. Ooh. Well, let's see here. So for the chance to knock out um 50 shades of Janie Dornan and uh Beth from uh Yellowstone Todd's other favorite show uh who was <laughs> he was the the uh, the the mom the the mom character was uh was oh, got it. she go. was also she's also uh she's been in a few things too the british actress she's Yes been exactly yeah. Yes, but yeah, that's her most notorious role in this day and age. Um, I, you know, holding it up with the other two films, I, I probably enjoyed those potentially. But I really like the on the. Uh, I like the Nile film a bit better than this. Mm-hmm. Don't exactly remember why, but this is this is a good six and a half. Uh, seven and a half pipes for me. Seven and a half wax with a with an axe. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. Right, Aaron. Uh, yeah, for me, I'm definitely. Yeah, I think I'm going to land at about seven out of ten for me too because. Um, I, I think that the changes that they made from the book really elevated the story beyond um, what it was originally. Um, and I also want to comment on the fact that the cinematography in this was so good. They filmed this so completely differently from the past two films and the angles that they use and a lot of the um, symbolism they use with like the birds and apples and things like that. Just brilliant visual storytelling yeah. and and that's something you've got to respect because that's so hard to pull off in a believable effective way and i feel kenneth brennick has such a good eye for that and yeah. and i really appreciate that for sure very good yeah and i you know i just went to venice uh a couple months ago so it was bringing back like oh i remember dr- going to venice and seeing all the landscape i remember that back. murder i had to solve i know it's exactly. just, it's just well, like i was there were, again so every the time you go on vacation the, yes, the murder the murder stopped after I left for some. I reason. guess, I, yeah. And did you find that catacomb where the 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 knights uh, the knight's uh, tomb was, and find your oh, way yeah. to find the Holy Grail? You did that too. You didn't it, tell us about that. Uh, exactly. Shit. Yeah, and, and Charlie, we call them catacombs. Uh, <laughs> mine, if it's the experts. If, it, if it's from the, if it's if it's from the sparkling region of uh, Venice. <laughs> yeah. So when we went to France, actually, like when we when when Chris was pregnant with Logan, we went to went to Paris, and there's the catacombs there. The woman kept saying the catacombs. I'm like. Okay, yes. that's a cool way to say it. I want to say it that way too. Oh so I'm going goodness. to. I'm fancy. So I will give this movie an eight because the cinematography totally sold me. I like the spooky nature of it and I like the, the murder mystery. Mm-hmm. So I really enjoyed it. Eight out of 10. Uh, I'm all in on. I probably should catch up on the other movies now. I think my wife was trying to like, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know. Steve, you say he's my favorite. And I'm like, okay. So I think oh she's boy. down to see the other ones now. So mm-hmm. we'll oh go from goodness. there. So awesome. Nice. Well, Aaron, thank you so much for joining us. You were a pleasure. Um, I'm glad you didn't leave halfway through because you were like, these weirdos are dumb. He knew what he was lining up for. Yeah, Plus, yeah. He, did, he doesn't want to lose face in front of me. And after all, I'm, you know, as Andy Samberg said, I'm the boss. <laughs> oh, Tony Danza is the boss. Oh, oh you got me. Oh. Or is it well, Angela? I can't remember. <laughs> well, I can't thank you enough for uh, letting me be on this show. This was fantastic. I think you guys are great, and I had a ton of fun. Well, we, we well, will con- we will continue to employ your podcastry on other programs. I, if I'm not mistaken, I, uh, I'd tell be Jessica happy to. Flesher we said hi and good luck solving mysteries. Exactly. I'll, good luck. I'll let her know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Aaron, where do people find you out there? Uh, well, you can find uh, our. Uh, uh, GBMI on Facebook. Just search uh, Michigan Michigan Ghostbusters GBMI. Uh, our newest endeavor, uh, USS Rhapsody. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, USS Rhapsody SFI. 
And uh, we also have a rep- website that is under construction, but it will be launching soon, ussrhapsody.org. It must be because it's part of your shakedown directory. You don't want to get in trouble yes, with April. Is. April I, is I, a, I, she is she is our shakedown director pretty much for the region. So, um, well, cool. Well, you can, as always, find me over on Twitter, slash X, at the C3. Go ahead and spell it out. As Aaron was already talking about SFI, uh, my wife April and I do run the USS Grand Petoskey, one of the biggest chapters of SFI in the world. We are based here in West Michigan, but we have trekkers all over the place. I'm also very privileged to be the head dude for Region 13, which is Michigan and Eastern Canada. If you're a trekker within the sound of my voice, give us a googs or shoot us uh, an email from the Grand Potassi or the Region 13 websites. We can connect you with other trekkers. Todd, what about you? Um, I'm on Twitter. I'm not calling X. Um, at the Oxtra. <laughs> He's Follow me back. there. Uh, mm-hmm. Also check out us on Threads at the Oxtra and also SFU uh, as well on Threads. We're there. And then check out SeekerFriendsUnite.com for all our good stuff. And also check out our Patreon and uh, give it a trial. You might like yeah. it. You just might come back. Awesome. Well, friends, as always, thank you for joining us. I'm going to tell you that sharing is caring and to keep on trucking. The hero, not the villain. In a truck. <laughs> Don't get killed in the catacombs. This podcast is part of the Secret Friends Unite podcasting network. Visit secretfriendsunite.com for more great shows, articles, news, reviews, and more. Secret Friends Unite podcasts are available on Apple, Google, Spotify, and other podcast services around the world. If you'd like to be part of the conversation, you can join us on Facebook or our new Discord server. Or follow at Secret Friends U on Twitter. Please subscribe to Secret Friends Unite on YouTube and visit our merch store at tpublic.com. Just search Secret Friends Unite. Thanks for listening.